Christina loved to sing, and we always think that she sang before she talked. She liked to dress up in costumes. And so when we were living in Pennsylvania and she's just a little tiny girl, I would tell her, let's go to the grocery store. And she'd come downstairs wearing towels around her head and around her shoulders. And I remember one day in particular, I said, who are you today? And she said, I'm Mary. And then whenever we would do the checkout, she'd be sitting in the grocery cart. The people in Pennsylvania would say, and who are you today, Christina? <laughs> <laughs> she was a very good student. She loved to learn. And she, when she graduated from high school, she was uh, a National Merit Scholar, and she was also salutatorian of her graduating class. She was a natural leader. Even from the time she was itty bitty, one time we were hiking to, the, uh, to a waterfall in the Poconos, and she was three or four, and she just led the way for the family. And I thought to myself, that little girl is a leader. She was kind, she was caring, and she was empathetic. school she suffered from bad cramps and she would get tearful before a period and there were lots of late nights where she's doing homework and crying and but then the next day her period would start and so we just always thought that was so many. We tried birth control pills her senior year for cramps that didn't go over so well so we didn't know if it was overwhelming stress and of course we wouldn't look back on that for many years until this year to see oh that was probably why. Then after we moved to Missouri, she had her first suicide attempt. So she called me and she said, I've just attempted suicide and I stopped because it hurt. started hearing from her more and more a few months before she came home. She was always going to a therapist and seeing a psychiatrist and she'd call me from time to time and say, oh, they've diagnosed me with bipolar too. And um, I'd say, well, that's that would be okay if you really had bipolar, but I've known you your whole life. I just don't believe that's it. And then it was um, major depressive disorder with panic or anxiety, major um, anxiety disorder, um, treatment resistant depression, so all these different things. She had her first suicide attempt. And uh, then we wouldn't know till several months later that she started her period just a few days later. And so then we went for nine months, we're taking her back and forth to the hospital because of delusions or an ambulance would take her because of suicide attempts. And I lay my head on my pillow and a voice spoke to my mind. A male voice came in right here and said, look up menstrual psychosis. Now, I don't know if people listening to this will think that's really odd, but all I know is I've never heard that term. I Googled it right away. And then I spent the rest of the night reading about my daughter because there was article after article about PMDD. And there was one in particular about 17 women who had gone undiagnosed and untreated for a long time. And I was hearing Christina's voice as I was reading their quotes. So I was able to make a grid showing all her hospitalizations due to delusions and suicidality correlated with her periods. And her period would always start within a day or maybe three days or so after that hospitalization. 